Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Andrew Glazer, and today I would like to teach you how to graph the following polynomial function of x plus 3 squared times x minus 2. So uh, the first thing is, I it, you don't really have to do this in any particular chronological order here, um, but uh, what I think would make sense first is to just get an overall idea of the end behavior of this particular function. Now the end behavior of this function is going to be a function of the overall order of this entire function. In other words, just take the multiplicities, okay? So if you have each factor listed out as we do here, right? X plus three, X minus two, if you're like, well, what the heck is a factor? It's just gonna be X plus some value, all right? You're gonna have, it could be two X here or three X, it doesn't matter, but it should be X to the first power added to some value. Right, and it doesn't even have to technically be added to some value. Uh, there could just be like two x or just x by itself. So it's basically x, you know, plus or minus something, and this something could be zero in that case, raised to some power. All right, but as long as the x inside of this parenthesis is to the first power, that's how you know you have a factor. Now, when you want to find the overall multiplicity of the function, all you have to do is add up then, once it's in factored form, fully factored form, you have to add up the exponents. Remember, if there's no exponent there, it's a, assumed to be a one. So the total, I'll write something here, like the total multiplicity, I'm just gonna write multi, mult for now, is gonna be a two plus one, so the total is gonna be a three. That means it's going to have a behavior like a cubic, cubic function, okay? Now, with cubic functions, or uh, we can now say that this is going to be, not only is it a cubic function, but we can also kind of note the, uh, whether it's odd or even, okay, it's odd. Cubic functions will follow similar behavior to all odd multiplicity functions, all right? What does that look like? Well, it looks something like this. Here you have your even degrees, here you have your odd degree polynomial functions, and depending upon whether the positive leading coefficient is going to be greater than zero, or whether it's less than zero. In other words, if you had a negative outside of there, you would have been following this particular behavior. If you would have had nothing there or a positive, which we have basically, you would be following this behavior. So basically what's happening here is that the end behavior, this thing is gonna trail on off for, forever in that direction. And this is gonna trail on off in that direction forever. Now the interesting parts are gonna be what's gonna happen in here. Okay, do we get like a little, you know, thing like this, it come like this, does it go up and then come down and then go like that, right? Uh, but the end behavior is pretty well set now, okay? So I know that we're going to have some type of behavior like that, right? So just keep that in mind. So I'll basically draw my axes here and I'm just going to write like a little point. I'll write a little point here or dot a little point there, okay? I know this is going to trail off down there and trail on up over there, all right? Actually, I'll just leave the arrow there to, to remind us. So once I have that now, the next thing I want to do uh, is to then find the zeros, or aka the x-intercepts, okay? The x-intercepts uh, will be found by taking each factor you have and setting it equal to zero. Why is that the case? I got 20 or so odd videos out there. Take a look at this playlist, graphs, the polynomial functions. Locate the videos where I talk about finding the x-intercepts. I go through Detail on that, okay? Detail. Um, so in this problem, I'm just going to tell you the process, and we're going to take x then plus 3, and what you, you don't even need this power, actually. Just take the factor inside, set that equal to 0, and then take x minus 2, set that equal to 0. You're going to subtract 3, right, for this one on over to both sides, and that x is obviously going to be equal to negative 3, and then x will also be equal to positive 2 over here, all right? So hopefully that kind of makes sense. I don't know why that's turning into a box, but there you go. All right. Um, these will now represent the zeros or AKA the X intercepts. So I know if this is the origin here, right? If I count out to one, two and negative three, okay? I should expect something to be going on right around here. I'll call that negative three. The graph should be crossing that, okay? Well, let me not say cross, it should be touching that point. And I also know something's going on here at x is equal to 2, okay? Now, what happens, whether this function now, you might notice, whether the function crosses that point at negative 3, or whether it comes up and bounces, what we call, will totally depend on the multiplicity, meaning the power, of that particular factor, 
Okay? So even multiplicities, even multiplicities bounce for that individual factor. Odd multiplicities, which we have here, okay, for the, this factor, right, it's, uh, it's a 1, the power is 1, they cross. So remember, this value, this x-intercept of negative 3, okay, was gotten from this factor, and this factor had a power or a multiplicity of 2, it's going to bounce, okay, it's going to bounce. So what, what we're going to expect to happen is that this graph will come up, it will touch this point and then bounce back down. Okay. Now, since this is a, uh, since our x intercept of positive two, all right, uh, was odd, it just crosses. So eventually what's going to happen here is that this is probably going to come up here, cross this, okay, and then go straight on up. All right. Now, I know my picture isn't the most beautiful thing in the world at the moment, but uh, so far, hopefully so good. The only bit of information now we can kind of find out, all right, is going to be uh, the y-intercept, okay? Now, the y-intercept here, how do we find the y-intercept, right? We found the x-intercepts. There's only two, all right? We figured out the end behavior, okay? And then the last thing is to probably find the y-intercept, okay? So when we find the y-intercept, remember, you know something unique about the y-intercept. The x-value is equal to zero, Okay, the x value is equal to zero. So what that means now, okay, what that will mean is in order to find that x, that y intercept, you're going to take your function here, okay, you're going to take your function f of x. Remember, instead of writing f of x, you can just write y if you want, because there's basically the same thing. And you're going to rewrite it, okay, I might have said that like three times now, but I don't really remember. It's hard for me to remember the past minute or so of my life now. As I get older, I realize I don't even know what I had for dinner last night. Yeah, what are you going to do? What you're going to do, well, what we're going to do in this problem is we are going to plug in now zero in for x. And we want to calculate what y will be, because that is the definition of a y-intercept, where the x value is zero. So we want to see what that y value becomes, right? So this is going to be three squared, and this is going to be negative two, so as we expect now here, this is going to be 9 multiplied then by negative 2 should be negative 18. So what we should expect now, and that's kind of almost right if you notice how I dipped this down, right? The only way I this had to bounce and the only way it's going to come back up, you know, and cross number 2 is if it kind of intersects the x-axis, excuse me, the y-axis somewhere below the x-axis. So it should be some negative value, right? So I should be expecting this value roughly here. Now, this is not all to scale, but this should be like negative 18. All right. So now let me try to make this a little cleaner, maybe. Let me see if I can just remove that. Let me erase this because, honestly, it's very embarrassing the way this is drawn. It's just absolutely sloppy. And I'm going to try to make it a little nicer. No guarantee here. No guarantee. But hopefully this will do something. Yeah, no. Okay. Let's try this, and then we'll try something like that. And I don't know, I'm going to try to marry the two. This isn't really going to work too well, is it? No, this is really not. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Oh, would you look at that? Oh, my goodness. Okay, cool. We're getting somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. You're like, all right, this is terrible. Okay. No. Okay, and there we go, right? There we go. All right. Now, uh, let's, now that I have this drawn a little better, right, this is basically now the graph. All right, this is the graph. This is the graph. Now, you can double check it, use your calculator, all right, and just plug in this function, right? Go to y equals, do open parentheses, then x plus 3, close the parentheses, square it, and then open the parentheses, do x minus 2, close the parentheses, and now Go to zoom standard for now, so zoom and then number six. And this is basically what it's starting to look like, all right? I'm going to adjust this a little bit because the window only goes down here to negative 10. So I'm going to go to my y min, right? And instead, I'm going to go to negative 20. Now just hit graph again, and look. Lo and behold, doesn't, don't these two now look basically the same, right? And it should, okay? So that's how you figure out how to graph a polynomial function. 
figure out the total multiplicity, all right, whether it's odd or even, that'll tell you the end behavior, basically. So you got to figure out the end behavior, figure out the x-intercepts, figure out the y-intercept, and then literally just kind of connect it. It'll, it should make sense at that point how to connect it. Guys, thanks so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. And if it did, give us a hand if you can. Like, subscribe, maybe you can tell some of your classmates. All right? We are so appreciative of all the support you show us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Take care.